is NJ, your host on this channel. Continuing our discussion on understanding the planetary presence in different houses. In this video, we are going to have our discussion on the planetary presence in the ascendant or the first house of your astrological chart. Friends, I am very sorry. I do not follow any order. I just randomly pick up the houses. So there is no order in that, but there is a lot of substance and information in this series. So friends, when we talk about the ascendant, definitely this is a very important house. It has also got its spiritual connotation as well. Your soul has got the vehicle in the form of this body and every information pertaining to your body can be derived from your first house, the dignity and strength of your first house. So first house to begin with tells about your personality. Like when I say personality, so your complete physical characteristics, your complexion, your facial features, like a lot of that can be determined just by looking at which sign is rising in the first house. Who is your first house lord? So for example, if you have Aries rising, you might have a scar on the forehead like me. Or if you are a, a cancer ascendant, you might be uh, having a, a round face or round soft facial features. If you are Libra ascendant, you might have an oval shape. So a lot of information pertaining to your uh, facial features, your complexion, your personality can be derived just by looking at the first house. First house also tells about the kind of impression people get when they look at you. So now friends try to understand over here. Your personality might be defined more by the strong planet which could be Venus. But just because you have Saturn present over there in your first house. So when people look at you, all those people who do not know you on a deeper level they might get the first impression of saturn that this person might be very uh, dry very visionary very introvert so that is how we get to know the first impression which you exude in the world apart from that your fame prospects we see from the first house your health prospects can be determined from the first house the kind of potential and capabilities you carry within yourself i always say this thing that no matter how much strengthened position your other planetary presence in other astrological houses are making unless and until you do not have a strong strengthened first house your personality might lack that potential your chart might not have that activating or triggering factor in your life so for example no matter if your 11th house is promising lot many opportunities your 10th house is promising you lot many professional uh, development and growth but if your ascendant or your ascendant lord is going to be weak so you might not have the capacity or potential to encash on all those opportunity like the way people say this thing that if someone hands over million dollars to you it's better and it's very advisable that you become millionaire with your mindset because if your mindset is not going to be of a millionaire so like we have seen all those documentaries where people win money in the lottery and everything and they end up losing everything in their wrong inefficient management of the finances so because of which your potential your capability no matter how much afflictions you have in your chart if you are going to have a strengthened first house that means it has got this potential to nullify the negativity or affliction coming out from other houses of your chart and along with that first house also tells about the reason of your birth the purpose of your birth which has got a spiritual connotation to it and along with that what could be the circumstances around your birth like the way i always say this thing that just because in within our family all of our charts are related to each other i say this thing that if you want to know the karmic connection which you have with your other family members just look at where your ascendant sign is influencing or touching in their chart basis their ascendant so for example if you are a Aries ascendant and your mother has got a leo ascendant so it means your ascendant is influencing the ninth house of your mother so it might be the blessing of the gods that you have born as a blessing to your mother so there can be so many connotation to it but all of that connection are always seen from the ascendant or from the first house only so now friends we will not go further that where your ascendant lord is placed this video is completely dedicated and devoted to the planetary presence in the houses so just because of the sign which falls on the first house basis that it gets determined that what kind of planetary vibration or energies you will deal with in other houses or areas of your life so for example fifth house definitely tells about your relationship with your um, children a ninth house tells about your relationship with teachers guru and father so house represent 
definite and fixed qualities. It's on the basis of the zodiac sign which comes over there. We get to know that once we enter that house, what kind of environment, what kind of decor, what kind of challenges or opportunities or theme we are going to find. So all of that get determined on the basis of which sign has come on the first house and basis that consecutive signs falls in other houses. And lastly, friends, first house also tells about your conduct and your actions in the society. So now, friends, let's say, for example, if we will find the presence of sun in the first house. So that can be seen as a very good sign because, uh, you know, like uh, even in the original Karl Purush Kundli, this is the house where sun gets the directional strength, sun gets exalted over here. So when we talk about your leadership qualities, executive abilities, your capacity for getting name, fame, recognition, being recognized in your chosen field. So all those prospects are definitely going to be strong and prominent. Now friends, like the way I say this thing that just because here we are talking about your first house, which determines and has a say in your complete life. So here we are not talking about your finances, which could be your second house or your profession, which could be your 10th house. First house means your complete life. So sun, which represents the fatherly influence as well. So some sort of strong involvement or influence of father in overall uh, functioning decision making of your life can be foreseen with the placement of sun in your first house now it all comes down to in which dignity sun is present over here but when we talk about from the prospects of name fame recognition having that glory and regality in your personality that whomsoever is going to look at you they are going to get that impression of you know someone who has got strong morals and ethics and values and dignified conduct that is how you can foresee the results with the placement of sun over here. Now friends, let's say for example, if sun is going to get afflicted because of the presence of Rahu or any other sort of affliction. So it could also give rise to lot of kind of a high ego as well, where you have to balance it out. Moving ahead friends. Now let's say for example, if you will find the presence of moon in the first house. So friends, truth to be told, if I were to pick up any person to be good friends with or being acquainted with so i will definitely pick someone who has got moon in the first house because definitely this person is going to be very caring very nurturing because all the luna qualities of emotions feelings are definitely going to cover the complete personality of the person and it also comes down to how strongly moon is going to be conjunct with the degrees of the ascendant so let's say for example if moon is very tightly within five degree is conjunct with ascendant so definitely emotions feelings imaginative qualities are definitely going to take a say along with that natives mother might also have a strong positive influence in the life of the native and not only that if moon's degree is strongly conjunct with the ascendant's degree native might also uh, you know demonstrate and carry lot of the traits from his mother side only like complexion of the mother facial features which have uh, you know gone completely uh, equivalent or akin to the mother so that is how you can see qualities getting manifested with the presence of moon in the first house so someone who can be very um, you know emotional someone who might have uh, interest in lot of travels in exploration and most importantly this person is someone you can trust upon with your feelings with any of your secrets and you can fairly see a good empathizing friend with uh, this person who is going to have his moon in the first house and definitely with moon strongly conjunct with the ascendant degree close to the ascendant degree this can also give round face and very you know kind of a chubby a very childlike kind of innocence in the face as well if the degrees of moon is going to be predominantly connected with the ascendant degrees moving ahead friends now let's say for example if you will find the presence of mars in the first house so definitely friends because in the original karl purush kundli this is the house which carries mars's aries sign energy only so if mars is going to be well dignified over here with the uh, sign placement and it is not getting afflicted with the aspect or conjunction with any other malefic planet so mars can actually manifest good results in the form of your personality being very courageous very determined very strong willed strong resilience and just because if mars's degree is going to be strongly conjunct with ascendance degree so it can actually make your personality very young very athletic very you know kind of broad shoulder and just because whenever people look at you the first impression is always get judged from the first house so you might demonstrate and manifest this 
impression that this is a person who is going to be very disciplined this is a person who is very loyal very commanding very confident so that is how you will see energies manifesting but let's say for example friends if you will find mars to be getting afflicted because of the uh, you know presence of saturn over here because of the presence of rahu over here so first house generally tells about our first reaction to any given situation so this can actually give you very explosive very impulsive very kind of a very outburst giving kind of personality so there you have to make a healthy balance and you have to learn how to use the martian energies in a constructive way moving ahead friends now let's say for example if we will find the presence of mercury in the first house so that can be seen as a very good sign all the mercurian qualities of uh, intellectual uh, mental aptitude when we talk about strong discriminatory intelligence your capacity to travel to communicate learn lot many languages adapt yourself to any given prevalent circumstances so all these qualities are going to manifest because of the mercury's presence over here in your first house mercury is also a very uh, young planet mercury is also a very friendly planet so this is also going to give us this idea how your conduct is going to be in the society and not only that the kind of impression which people get when they look at you so your personality might come across as someone who is very relatable who is very adaptable who is a team player so that is how the mercurian qualities are going to manifest over here and let's say for example if with this placement you uh, take uh, your uh, profession you make your profession in the fields of accounting public speaking anything to do with business becoming self employed freelance you know working with your own skill so with this placement of mercury in the first house it can actually help you encourage you in any of those chosen occupations moving ahead friends now let's say for example if we will find the presence of jupiter over here which can be seen as a good sign because friends jupiter is definitely the guru the preceptor and teacher amongst the planets and along with that the presence of jupiter in the first house just tells about that divine grace touches you in which specific area of your life so first house which defines your complete life so this can be seen as a good sign like i have generally seen that all those people who have here you do not even have to take into consideration moon just the mere presence of jupiter in the first house can be seen as a good sign that the mentors the advisors capacity to see goodness and you know being touched by the epiphanies inspiration realization so from all of those perspective the presence of jupiter in the first house can be seen as a good sign like capacity to gain lot of knowledge being respected and access to lot many opportunities can be foreseen with this presence of jupiter over here now friends the only one thing which i want to say over here is that because jupiter has this tendency of expanding everything so if you have jupiter strongly conjunct with your ascendant degrees you have to take an account on your weight because many times it gives excessive weight gain as well so friends the vulnerable side of this placement only manifest if you will find rahu to be conjunct with jupiter or jupiter to be debilitated or if it is not dignified in the first house then it can give rise to a very hypocrite nature uh, egoistic nature you know strong sense of self importance can be foreseen if you will find jupiter to be afflicted over here in the first house moving ahead friends now let's say for example if you will find the presence of venus over here which can be seen as a very good sign planet of beauty charisma a uh, harmony diplomacy being present in the first house that in itself means that your overall life is being shaded and colored with the venus in colors and just because first house also tells about the kind of first impression which we give in the world so people will definitely find you very relatable and for example if venus is going to be dignified and strongly conjunct with ascendant degrees it can actually give you a very charismatic personality very strong facial features can also be foreseen with this and capacity to do good in any sort of fields where there is lot of like uh, sensuality is required relationship management is required beauty looks is required presenting yourself with uh, you know a lot of aesthetics and grace is required so this placement of venus can be seen as a very good sign because first house act as a magnet so what kind of people you attract and what kind of people you repel that we get to know from the first house connected energies so if you will find the presence of such a, a harmonious uh, beautiful 
and a benefit planet it is definitely going to attract lot many uh, opportunities relationship which could be platonic which could be social friendly nature as well so that is how you will see energies manifesting with the venus's presence right over there in your first house people will definitely find you very relatable moving ahead friends now let's say for example if we will find the presence of saturn in the first house so friends uh, truth to be told like with saturn's presence in the first house it is always a red flag sign because saturn in itself represents karma so karma heaviness responsibility inertia is coming over there and sitting right over there in your first house the good part is that these are among those people who become mature very early in life some of them might even take family responsibility from a very young age from uh, demonstrating strong uh, you know academic intellectual quality visionary quality strong sense of fairness judgment this placement can be seen as a very good sign the only concern is that because saturn represents karma you cannot understand why you are getting punished uh, uh, whenever you are in the purview or influence of ketu or saturn because it has everything to do with the past life so the only thing which can be foreseen with this is that because wherever saturn is sitting in your chart the responsibility aspect test and trial aspect tend to remain very strong in that house so just because it is sitting right over there in your first house so always uh, guard your public image never associate yourself with any unethical actions but along with that if you will learn the saturnian principle of uh, humility of uh, being serviceful always trying to help people being very humble so if you can uh, blend and adapt your life with the saturnian principles so trust me with this position when we talk about power we talk about authority becoming a successful politician all those things can be foreseen and friends the only concern is that with this placement and along with that if we will also find moon to be afflicted like moon is present in the 6th house 8th house 12th house so in those kind of circumstances it can with this dual effect of moon getting afflicted saturn over there in your first house in a negative side it can also make the personality very dry very pessimistic very melancholy so there you need to work on so friends in this kind of situation the only saving grace is going to come from jupiter's aspect or jupiter's presence in the chart so if jupiter is going to be looking at your first house to the ascendant it can actually uh, cancel or reconcile the melancholy side of saturn because otherwise it can give rise to lot of uh, pessimism and negativity as well moving ahead friends now let's say for example if you will find the presence of rahu over there in your first house so friends different astrologers have got a different view with this placement of rahu in the first house but trust me if i were to share my own opinion my own inputs i have generally seen that this placement can actually manifest good results because wheresoever rahu is present in our chart foreign element touches us in that house innovation touches us in that house and along with that potential and capacity of growth and expansion being out of the box can be foreseen with this placement so it all comes down to for any sort of growth exploration and expansion in life this placement can be seen as a good sign the only concern is that if rahu is going to be strongly conjunct with the ascendant degrees and your ascendant lord is weak then in those circumstances rahu can give problems pertaining to health and as you know that rahu's problems are always like which are not getting diagnosed and you know addictions illusion can be foreseen with this placement but again friends i will say with this placement if only you have rahu to be present in the first house and your ascendant lord is strong then in those kind of circumstances prospects of name fame recognition uh being a trend setter and because rahu is something which is like first house is something which people get to know when they first look at you so your first impression is going to be always creating a mystery always creating this kind of a hype around you so which can be foreseen as a very good sign for all those people who become these days who are becoming influencers who are becoming uh, celebrities all those uh, tiktokers youtubers so this placement can be seen as a very good sign for doing something in the fields of social media mass media and getting success over there moving ahead friends now let's say for example if you will find the presence of ketu in the first house so that can be seen as a little bit sensitive placement in this regard friends because okay there has been lot of stuff which has been written in our ancient 
टेक्स्ट बुक्स दैट इफ केतु इज स्ट्रॉन्गली कंजंक्ट विद द असेंडेंट डिग्रीज एंड असेंडेंट लॉर्ड इज ऑल्सो नॉट डिग्निफाइड वेल प्लेस्ड इट कैन गिव राइज टू सम सर्जरी और सम लिम्ब और सम ऑर्गन ऑफ द बॉडी मिसिंग एंड सो मेनी काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स विच हैज बिन रिटर्न विच इज नॉट अ कंप्लीट पिक्चर बिकॉज अनलेस एंड एंटली वी डू नॉट नो द होल अलाइनमेंट ऑफ योर चार्ट वी कैन नॉट से दोज थिंग्स बट डेफिनेटली विद दिस काइंड ऑफ प्लेसमेंट यू विल स्ट्रॉन्गली रीप द रिजल्ट ऑफ योर पास्ट लाइफ so with this kind of placement and ketu being strongly conjunct with the ascendant degrees we have to give attention to your fifth house your saturn your d60 chart your d9 chart before coming to any conclusion but the ketu qualities of uh, you know being a perfectionist being very critical and this is a kind of placement which can actually manifest good results if you will learn to uh, kind of sacrifice yourself towards your public duties because our obsession always goes in the house where rahu is sitting so rahu is in the 7th house so this placement can actually help all those people who are in any sort of you know medical field you uh, are a politician where you have to wholeheartedly devote yourself to the world so their native can actually do very good the only concern is that native has to make a healthy balance of his own self approval in the society or in the world because many times what i have seen is that native gets too much dependent on the spouse on the partner or the world to acknowledge them so for example if i have to wear this t-shirt or not if i have to wear this specs or not this has to be my choice not on the basis of what world is saying what people are commenting on so if someone who is going to have strong ketu influence in the first house that person might become very much dependent on the approval which he will seek in the outside world but again friends with this kind of placement for anything to do with spirituality of raising up your kundalini and uh, you know those kind of psychic awareness this placement can be seen as a very good sign moving ahead friends now let's say for example if we will find the placement of uranus over here so definitely friends with uranus's placement over here native is going to have very innovative very uh, you know kind of a distinctive way of looking at the world this placement can make native a trend setter and native might have his own definition of presenting or projecting himself this person cannot become a very good follower he will not believe in conforming the traditional set course or path he might be a kind of a you know kind of a rebel in the form of his family his tradition or might want to project himself in a very unusually innovative new way and friends let's say for example if we will find the placement of neptune over here so friends as you know this thing that neptune's placement can be seen as a emotional turmoil so like the way first house is something which gives you this impression when people look at you what they are perceiving out of you so with neptune's placement this placement can give this idea of confusion of uh, enigma of chaos little bit kind of uh, you know mystery so it all comes down to which profession which occupation which you have chosen for yourself and the dignity and the strength of the ascendant lord along with is there any other planet which is influencing neptune over there in your first house so let's say for example if you are a um, pisces ascendant and you have neptune to be present over there in your first house and your jupiter is well placed then in those kind of circumstances neptune can actually manifest is strong intuitive psychic dreamy and creative qualities to the best of the a uh, level but let's say for example if you have neptune to be present in a sign where it is not going to manifest like for example you put it in a fire sign so you put it in a earth sign and your ascendant lord is also not very strong so then in those kind of circumstances there could be a tug of war or bone of contention and specifically not only from the perspective of your conduct in the society but the way people look at you and the impression they are going to form out of you now lastly friends if you will find the placement of pluto in the first house so definitely friends life is going to have lot many transformation life is definitely going to have a strong opinions strong taste strong sense of like and dislike and friends try to understand this thing when i say transformation like the video which i recently made on the 8th house because i'm not following any uh, any sequence i'm so sorry for that so the thing is when i say transformation it's not like that i used to smoke i quit smoking or i i was in a gluten free diet now i you know switched to a, a keto diet it's not like that transformation is something where you were like 
a very family oriented person and you became a celibate you joined the you know you took an uh, ascetic vow so there is a complete shift and u turn of your life that is something which we say with transformation in astrology which comes from which could come from first house which could come from eighth house so the point which i'm trying to make over here is that definitely uh, intense likes and dislike the native has to learn because you could not be behaving and you know kind of uh, expressing yourself in a way that either you are completely behaving like a reticent or you are not even involved in public affairs or sometimes you just want to devote yourself uh, completely and sacrifice yourself completely for any cause so there has to be fine balance in the way you are going to manifest yourself but let's say for example i always say this thing in the face of the outer planet specifically if the innate qualities which these outer planets represent and if you will find the conjunction or a sign which manifest those kind of equivalent qualities so for pluto if you get the support from for example ketu or you get the support from uh, mars or you get a fire sign over here so all the pluto qualities are going to accentuate so it all comes down to the dignity of your first house lord but definitely when people will look at you the first impression which you are going to give to the world is going to be that this is a person who is going to be very intense and he knows how to behave and this is a person who is going to have a strong opinions strong sense of like and dislike so that is something friends which i wanted to say as a part of my inputs on this discussion on the ascendant and the uh, planetary presence in the ascendant of your astrological chart so for further more updates and notifications on the divine science of vedic astrology please subscribe to my youtube channel and like my facebook page dhanyawad